Mass this morning is offered for the intention of the peaceful repose of the soul of Yolanda Lasky. Here is a wise virgin from among the number of the prudent who went forth with lighted lamp to meet Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O oh God, who in your mercy led St. Clare to a love of poverty, grant through her intercession that following Christ in poverty of spirit, we may merit to contemplate you one day in the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, the headland of Pisgah, which faces Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead, and as far as Dan, all Nephtali, and the land of Ephraim, and Manasseh, and the land of Judah as far as the western sea, the Negev, the circuit of the Jordan, with the lowlands at Jericho, city of palms, and as far as Zoar. The Lord then said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that I would give to their descendants. I have let you feast your eyes upon it, but you shall not cross over. So there, in the land of Moab, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died as the Lord has said, and he was buried in the ravine opposite Beth Peor in the land of Moab. But to this day, no one knows the place of his burial. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were undimmed and his vigor unabated. For 30 days, the children of Israel wept for Moses. In the plains of Moab, so they had completed the period of grief and mourning for Moses. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom since Moses had laid his hands upon him. And so the children of Israel gave him their obedience, thus carrying out the Lord's command to Moses. Since then, no prophet has arisen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He had no equal in the signs and wonders the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt, against Pharaoh and all his servants, against all his land. And for the might and the terrifying power that Moses exhibited in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Be Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, 
How tremendous are your deeds. Blessed be God, who filled my soul with fire. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Bless our God, you peoples. Loudly, loudly sound his praise. Blessed be God, who filled my soul with fire. Hear now, all you who fear the God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Blessed be God, who filled my soul with fire. God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, Tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth, about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. We see the power of praying together that in this prayer where there is agreement and the will of God is discerned in the power of the Holy Spirit this affects communion and makes God present uh, in an effective way and we see the primacy of relationships that God through his son Jesus works to establish a kingdom that is structured and organized in an orderly way an appropriate way uh, so that it may function as a kingdom, something that moves beyond the family uh, into a broader basis, a kingdom uh, in the world but not of the world, a kingdom that is greater than all the nations as Christ is King of King and Lord of Lords and Mary is the Queen Mother of all and all nations are to be subject uh, to this King uh, so that the Christians are to evangelize uh, even her leaders uh, go and proclaim Christ to all nations, baptizing them so that all become children of God the Father and enter into the kingdom of Christ. This is the goal of Christianity, that all members of any nation, nations that we value, we're not, in this sense, globalist. We believe in the importance of nations, the distinction of nations, the boundaries of nations, because these are recognized by God, and so we, we want to have strong national identity and we want to ha interpenetrate each of the individual nations so that the authentic diversity of nations. You can see 
a national ethos and culture that has been radiated with the light of Christ is unique in its own way and is expressing something of God by all members, including the leaders of those countries, acknowledging the true king, Jesus, who is in heaven above us and came not precisely to establish a political kingdom, but to interpenetrate every political kingdom, to penetrate every political kingdom, whether that be in China, the United States, wherever. The goal of the Christians is to bring Christ to all, uh, whether they be just workers, merely working in the culture, or those who have power within the culture. And the way this is affected is in small terms first. So the Holy Family. All of history is changed through one Holy Family, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is God as a type of family we see. But then uh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Here on earth, all is changed uh, because Joseph, uh, what does he come from a line of? A line of of kings. He's from the house of David. And his son, therefore, legally, through him being the father, becomes the true king that fulfills what was anticipated by David, so that it is a top-down reality. So that from a father, the king on son, the king on earth now can help all people be children of God the Father, and belong to one kingdom, even if they belong to various nations. And so we see how God has worked in this way. And what are we constantly trying to do? On the micro level, we're trying to constantly strengthen relationships. We're constantly working to bond together by having a will united to the will of God the Father. And what distresses us the most is any division in relationship to realize, you know what, I'm actually not in a fundamental grounded relationship with this person because we're not both focused on God the Father and Christ the King. Okay, and we understand this, right? That there is division where there is not the will of the Father shared by people. That's why when we gather, what do we fundamentally pray? The Our Father, thy will be done on earth. Earth is that from which we are created, right? Adam is made from the earth. The union, the order that God wants is through union of hearts in the sacred heart to the will of God the Father. And so we see this. If a brother sins against you, go and tell him the fault between you. Why do you keep it on this level? You don't want to detract. It is a sin to detract. So if somebody does something against me and I fail to go to that person individually and in private speak to them, but instead talk to my fellow parishioner, oh, I can't believe what so-and-so did, or even talk to the priest and say to me, you know what so-and-so did? I don't need to hear that. I represent the church. Who needs to hear it? The person who has offended you. You need to vulnerably go to that person, have a prayerful discussion, beginning with prayer, and see if there can be a communion of wills. That's where that needs to go. If that's actually taken outside of that relationship, that's a sin of detraction. It falls under lying. Okay? You, you failed in courage and failed in charity. Okay? So that's a very important thing. And then, if that doesn't work, well, you got to triangulate the situation. Obviously, you two are not seeing eye to eye, and you can't see the will of the Father together. And so what you do next is you say, okay, to that person, is there somebody you trust and I trust that we can bring into the situation so that we can come to agreement? You bring that person, trusted by both, to get a clear vision. And hopefully where two or three are gathered in the name of Jesus, you can affect a common view of one will. The will of God the Father lived in three individual persons and each having a role, and yet united in the fact that there is the will of God the Father in it. And then, if that doesn't work, then you come see Father Jack. That's the point where you go see Father Jack. Once you've done that hard work appropriately. Now, there's obviously cases where that can't be done because the person's a bad actor and may be abusive or so forth, and it's, it's too... There's cases where you just... The, the person's not even interested in truth or love 
or God. It's a different situation. But in situations where you're encountering a Christian, it should be carried out in a Christian way, and that's the appropriate way. And one of the greatest sins, one of the most common sins of our time really is the traction, that many times we speak to other people about what a person has done that is evil, and the person we're speaking to would not know this unless we told them. And when we say that, that ruins the reputation of that person. And you're usually talking to somebody who tends to agree with you, if you ever noticed. Oh, yeah, of course I know. You're a good person, but this person must be really terrible if you're bringing up this person to me. And what does that sow? That sows division within families, division within parishes, division within dioceses, division within the church. Detraction, one of the most common sins against truth and against the use of the tongue. And so we have to really be very intelligent about how we seek reconciliation. There's times where reconciliation is not possible. Forgiveness is always possible. Reconciliation may not. And what is forgiveness? Forgiveness is for me to say, I do not want to seek vengeance against this person. And I desire that they would do God's will. It's all you want. You say, I'm not, I'm not seeking vengeance. All I want that person to do, because if they do God's will, they're in a good place. Okay, we may, we may not be able to see how they're doing, but if they're doing God's will, his ordained will, they are pleasing to God the Father. And that's what we should wish for people. Because what happens typically, if we're doing God's will, and they begin to do God's will, we see them entirely differently. Someone who was formerly an enemy, if they do God's will and we're doing God's will, they become a friend. And the victory is that of a loving father over his children. It is now the prodigal son and the other son can have a good relationship. Do you remember where fa the father uh, said, what's your problem, man? Your, bro your bro's back? He he's sorry for his sin? I'm, I'm welcoming him. But the other was like, man, you never threw a party for me. I was always faithful to you. What's the problem here? And, and he says, this is a problem. And the father says, the problem is yours, son. I forgive him. Okay, the problem is you weren't happy being with me. Everything I have is yours. This is the typical position of a Catholic that complains when some other Catholic comes back. Well, how come? I've been faithful all this time. It's been so hard. Uh, you're not pleased to do the Father's will? Did the son, Jesus, when he rose from the dead, go to his father and say, Man, you made me carry the cross. Gosh, I had to carry this cross. And look at all these sinners out here who crucified me. And I had to bear the cross, being your son. And what kind of celebration did I get? I just got Calvary. Do you get what I'm saying? We got to figure out how Christ operates. He didn't operate. We're celebrating Calvary today. We're celebrating Calvary. He says, yeah, this is my feast. This is the feast for my prodigal son who's coming back. This is the feast that we celebrate. Okay, we got to remember exactly what's going on. There is no important, more important work in the world than reconciling with brothers and sisters. There's none. Within a parish, there is no important, more important business than being in a good relationship with fellow parishioners. There is no important, more important business. None. None whatsoever. If we have issues among each other, we're not going anywhere. God does not claim to be present among those who pray together and are not united in the will of God the Father. He is not present in that situation. So we must be sure that reconciliation with people we visibly can see within our own families and in our own parish is priority number one. We can talk all we want to about the situation of the culture, the world, the church, we're not going anywhere unless we get reconciled on the ground level. If you were on a battlefield and you have these, and you got to fight this battle here and you say, hey, listen, I want to uh, conquer Hitler. No, you're on this battlefield. You're in this place. If you don't achieve victory here, there will be no victory anywhere. There'll be none. And so we must be seeking this arduously on a daily basis. Why? Because everything is personal. God makes his very kingdom in heaven a personal intercommunion. It's not stuff. It's persons. 
that are actually the building, the dwelling place of God. God dwells in them, and they dwell in God. God dwells in us, and we dwell in God. It's penetration through the power of the incarnation of the Son, Jesus. And we can see this, for example, in Moses, you know, Moses uh, is able to do miracles that are incredible, that are visible for people to see. Jesus, when he comes, does miracles that are hidden. Okay, so Moses... When he does his miracle, bread comes down from heaven, we can observe it. People, you know what? There's people in the world who prefer to have that miracle, man in the morning, than the son of man every morning. Because I can see it. They're empiricists. They're materialists. Who are we? We're faithful. We believe in what is hidden. There's a miracle that's occurring, and it's personal. It's not bread I eat for my stomach. It, in fact, is the Son of Man that I consume to be converted into him and enter into him through his heart. And this faith enables us to receive something far greater, which is Moses calling out to the Father is able to receive this gift of manna, and the people are able to share it. That's great. But now, in persona Christi, the priest comes here and calls on the Father and he continues to send his son, and we receive him as the bread of life. That what was separate, manna and Moses, becomes one, I am the bread of life in Jesus. It becomes personal. God takes everything personally. This is what's so significant. It's a personal reality. The person of Christ. We need to get over personalities and into the second person of God Almighty. This is what Christ is calling us to. Get over the issues that separate you. Get into being united perfectly in my love. God's grace is sufficient and superabundant. And God's grace changes us. He doesn't just cover us with his grace. He penetrates us with his grace to transform us. And this is what we have to live out. We cannot expect others to change But we can't expect us to change if we follow God's will. We can't make other people change around us, but we can change to how we respond to sin, to how we respond to disorder, to how we respond to disinformation, to how we respond to malice. And we can respond in a way that does not imitate our enemies, but conquers them with the very mercy and love of God. This is so important for us. We must be so mature right now. We must have such order in our hearts, such peace in our hearts, that the world's disorder and lack of peace does not penetrate it. This is not, this is being defeated by our enemies. We must acknowledge enemies, but conquer them with the means given to us through the greater than Moses, Jesus Christ, the King, and by the gift of the Father who has given his Son to us. And so today, my brothers and sisters, uh, let us seek uh, with great uh, focus and intention reconciliation. Let us seek as much as possible in those who are in our midst to be as close as possible to them, accepting the boundaries God permits uh, because he gives people free will to make decisions. But our decision almost be, must be for forgiveness and for reconciliation. That must always be our decision. Why? Because ultimately, that is what we call Holy Communion. That's what we're about. Now, as children of God, let us stand before him. and Let us offer our prayers to him through the heart of Jesus and in the gift of the Spirit. Father, we pray today for our Pope, our bishops. We pray for all the faithful of the church that each of us may imitate St. Clair in living in a spirit of poverty and seeking to radiate the light of Christ to others. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord. And Father, we pray today that through the witness of Christians, imitating the virtues of St. Clair, many may come to proclaim Christ as King of all hearts and you as Father of all beloved children. For this we pray to the Lord. Father, we entrust to you our suffering this day through the sacred heart of your Son so that we may be blessed and become a blessing for others. For this we pray to the Lord. And Father, 
we pray in thanksgiving for the opportunity to renovate our church. We ask that all those involved in this work may you may bring to completion this work. For this we pray to the Lord. And Father, we entrust to you those petitions in our parish book of prayer and those petitions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. All of these petitions, whether spoken or unspoken, we entrust to the Immaculate Heart of Mary as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Praying always with the intercession of St. Mary, St. Joseph, St. Monica, St. Augustine, St. Benedict, St. Pius X, St. Clare, and all the angels and saints, good and gracious Father, with confidence, we offer these prayers to you through the heart of your Son and in the gift of the Spirit. For you are one mighty and merciful Lord forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Be forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine. We offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands that will become our spiritual drink. pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we proclaim your wonders, O Lord, in the Virgin, Blessed Saint Clare, we humbly implore your majesty that as her merits are pleasing to you, so too our dutiful service may find favor in your sight. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. It is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original holiness, and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Santus, Santus, Santus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Leni sunt celia terra, gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna, in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body 
and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium fidei, mortem tu hum anantiamus domine, et tu hum resurrectionem confitemur, donec venias. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory John, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your stay, we and this may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. On your stay, we On 
Emmanuel's day. Nobis part. And Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord God, the Lord God, the Lord God, the Spirit through death gave life to the world, created me by which you must, Lord God, and Lord, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not leave me to judgment and condemnation. For your love and mercy be from the protection of mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ, give me safe for eternal life. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Come out to meet Christ the Lord.
Let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of the blessed St. Clair, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. St. Joseph, son of David and the patron of the Universal Church, we entrust our campaign, building God's kingdom from within, to your intercession. The Heavenly Father made you foster father of his son, our king, and husband of his son's mother Mary, our queen. Indeed, God the Father gave you responsibility for his family and for the building of his kingdom. Therefore, St. Joseph, as father, foster in us authentic adoration of the bread of life. As husband, teach us through devotion and purity of heart for Mary. As visionary and carpenter and saint, help us to accept God's designs delivered to us by angels, to build a church beautiful and magnificent like Mary, and to worship the bread of angels in both spirit and truth. Finally, may your example of radiant simplicity and profound silence be manifest in the particular church God builds through our hearts and hands. May the Father bring to completion whatever good work he has begun in each of us for his glory and blessings upon all. Amen.